Fella, welcome back. So we're moving on to the next step now for this uh, McKellar breakfast stout. It's done fermenting. It's had its diastole rest for a couple of days, up that temperature to about 20 degrees, just let the yeast clean up after itself. We are now about ready to keg. In fact, we're going to be kegging her tomorrow. But what I'm going to do today is get the coffee into her. And I had somebody asking me what I was going to do with the coffee, how I'm going to use the coffee, how I'm going to brew the coffee, how I'm going to get the coffee in there and what coffee I'm using. So, the coffee brand I'm using is Taylors of Harrogate. Uh, rich Italian blend and it's not the strongest one they do it's not the weakest one they do it's nice and nutty nice and obviously roasty nice and fruity so how I'm going to use this coffee to get it into this beer is by using um, a cold brewing session of the coffee so I'm not going to make the coffee like I would do if I'm making a cup of coffee to drink so first and foremost sanitize the cafetiere. I know we're using boiled water and people are probably going to think well it's boiled water so that's fine but when you're pouring it out you want to make sure that uh, everything's been sanitized and you can give it all a nice spray down just before you pour it in on the uh, on the spout just before you pour it in but just as good practice got it nice and sanitized. Now the recipe asks for 500 mils of water to 50 grams of coffee so I boiled up the kettle, measured out 500ml of water and then I chilled that in the fridge. Left it in the fridge a couple of hours until it was, uh, it wasn't super cold, it was still a tiny bit warm but mainly cold. Once the water had been chilled down from boiling, then we weighed out the coffee. Now we wanted 50 grams of coffee but for the sake of what was left in the bag I put it all in so there's about 69-70 grams of this coffee. We're going to be golden with the coffee fellas. Um, and then I put it back in the fridge overnight so it's got time to infuse for a great length of time because you're using cold temperatures to do that. And um, we end up with this. <laughs> so now what we've got to do is just spray down everything with sanitizer again, just on the lid and um, on the spout general area like that. and then we can dump her in. Let's try and get this coffee in without making too much of a mess or oxidising too much. There we go. Put the uh, spout on the edge of the on the edge of the fermenter, and just let it run down. Just run down the side and into the beer. Oh, she's smelling good. Smelling good. Get her back in the fridge. And that's it. So, coffee is in. And uh, we did his best to run it down the side of the fermenter so we don't get uh, splashy, splashy oxygen in there. But uh, that's it, guys. Tomorrow, we're getting another keg. Alright, fellas. Welcome back. It's the next day. She's in the keg. So let's get a look at her, shall we? And there she friggin' is, boys. There she friggin' is. Um, she's chilly willy. So yesterday, uh, the coffee went in. And when I was kegging it, it smelt absolutely scrumptious. That coffee was really, really pronounced. So let's get a nose on her for a sneak peek. Oh yeah, yeah, nice and roasty. Uh, getting the complexity from the coffee. The smell uh, somewhat rich, somewhat indulgent. I know uh, as it conditions, it'll start to change dramatically. So she does coat the glass quite nicely. You get that same uh, 
same sort of coffee sticky look about her as she, uh, as she coats the glass. Oh yeah. Well anyway, it's a big old stout. It needs plenty, plenty time to condition. I'm hoping that I'm gonna keep off of it and let it condition up to Christmas. Because I think uh, it's gonna really shine when it's got a, a fair bit of age on it. But anyway, let's go for a taste. That's surprising, 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 surprising. <laughs> oh my goodness, boys, will it last till Christmas? That's quite exciting. That is a quite exciting, promising sneak peek taste for this McKellar Breakfast Stout clone. And surprisingly, the most surprising thing about it is the bitterness. I'm gonna cast your minds back to when we brewed this up. So, malts that were in this were Pilsner, oats, roasted barley, brown malt, cara amber, chocolate malt, and smoked malt. And like I thought um, would happen, because when I was smelling it mashing, you could get that smoke malt coming through. I think it only equates to, yeah, just almost 3% of the grain bill. So there was just enough in there just to, just to get some of that smoky flavour coming out in the mash. But it was sort of lending itself to... Um, to the roast and to the chocolate malt and it was just uh, emphasizing a, a more of a coffee roasty smell when it was when it was mashing and that seems to be what's imparted into the into the glass it's nice and roasty nice and malty seven malts in this one seven malts um, and you can really tell even at this stage that there's going to be some complexity to it. But the smoke malt for me is another surprising aspect. It, it sort of gives the roast another another dimension. It sort of elevates the roastiness a little bit. Even tasting it at this very, very early stage. The bitterness to it is wonderful. I was very worried that the Crazy Bacala fellas chucked in that hop, it'd be one of them love it or hate it kind of beers where it was absolutely bitter as you like and that it would probably take <clears throat> a great, great number of uh, weeks and months to mellow that bitterness. That's not the case. That ain't the case at all. So the Cascade and Centennial are um, on the lower bittering scale but uh, there was a hefty amount in there. There was like 70 grams. Let's have a look. There were 50 grams of Centennial and 20 grams of Cascade. That was 70 grams in total that went in at 60 minutes. That massive heap of bittering hops I was worried about. But straight away, it ain't too bitter. It adds a nice um, freshness to the malts. And as you can see, I'm not like puckering up or anything like that. It's definitely there, but it's not over the top. I cannot wait, cannot, cannot wait for this to get into the condition stages where I can give it a final thoughts, final tasting, because I think it's going to be a friggin' cracking video, that one. Mm. And I would say that anyone that likes the stouts, give this one a shot. It's, um, it's one of them beers, it doesn't happen often, but it's one of them beers where even the sneak peek is like boom got you straight away and you're loving it it doesn't happen often most of the time you can see where it's going to go once it's conditioned there's been the odd time where the sneak peek has been nice really nice and this is one of them mm. so it finished out um, on the refractometer at 10 36 
So if we account for alcohol in solution, this is what we've ended up with. Doesn't appear to be any off flavours. If there are, uh, coming from stressed yeast, then it is extremely well hidden with this complex roasty coffee flavours that are running through it. And uh, that coffee that we added yesterday is definitely adding something. Yeah, it's just a nice roasty stout at the minute. But I'm looking forward to seeing how it changes. I'm hoping some of that chocolate is gonna chocolate malt is gonna show its face once it starts to uh, condition. But well, that's it, fellas. Mm -mm. It's all gone. You can see it's coating the glass. You can see what sort of beer it's gonna be. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this Christmas. That's a bit uh, lass. Oh, that's it, fellas. As always guys, don't forget to thumb up this video if you don't Don't forget to hit this like and hit subscribe. Pick it up so that's coming next. Share the video, get it for all to see you until next time. I'm out of here.